The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'd like to start off with the story that happened to Rav Kahaneman, the Panovich Rav. This beautiful story is brought in Rabbi Spiro's book. Amazing story. And the way the story goes is Rav Kahaneman had a vision. He wanted to build Torah after the Holocaust. And people, they looked at him, they said, Rabbi, what are you kidding us? You're going to build a yeshiva in that land? It's deserted, it's empty. They, they, they couldn't imagine what the rabbi is visualizing. The rabbi was able to almost visualize the seat of yeshiva, and they weren't even to, able to understand it. And the rabbi was campaigning big and large, going all out. He's going to rebuild the Torah after the Shoah, after the Holocaust. So at one campaign, he was in South Africa. They had Askanim, they had Gabayim, people that were dedicated. And they were helping the rabbi in this beautiful dinner they were making in order to raise money to build a beautiful yeshiva. So at this dinner, everyone gave their beautifully generous checks. They gave the checks in an envelope, they gave it to the gabayim. The gabayim, they come to the rabbi and they say, Rabbi, these are the checks, these are the donations, these are the pledges, and these are the commitments by the people to help you build Torah. To build the Olam HaTorah again. Thank you very much. The next day the rabbi looks through the checks. And there was one check that stuck out. Not because it was the largest check, which it happened to be anyways. But what made it more interesting is that this check had no name on it. The largest check given, and the man didn't even write his name on the check. There's no name on the check. What's going on? So they go to the Gabayim, he goes and he says, guys, do you know who this signature is? You know this guy? They're looking they're like, we have no clue who this person is. Who in the world is this person? They couldn't even tell who this person is. And we don't know. So they go to the bank, and they tell the bank, could you please help us identify the owner of this check? What's his name? What's his address? So back then, it was a lot easier to get things out of the bank's candidate. And they said, no problem. Three days later, they come back to the rabbi and they give the rabbi the person's name and his address. They tell the rabbi, rabbi, this address, in order to get to this person's house, where the rabbi wanted to go to thank him, he would need to take an eight-hour train ride just to get to the person's house. Ya Latif, even more! Someone eight hours away took a train to the dinner to give a check anonymously? Who is this person? What is going on over here? So the rabbi took a train eight hours. He gets off the train into a taxi and he tells the taxi driver, can you please take me to this address? He says, if that's where you want to go, no problem. He starts driving and driving and driving. And you would think, okay, how much can you drive? You're in the city already. And he's driving, he's driving till he gets out of the city. Mr. Taxi driver, you sure you know where you're going? You're going to the right place? As Rabbi, I know exactly where we need to go. A deserted area. He's driving and traveling out of the city till you see an area full of sheds and shacks. And the Rabbi is confused. Someone living here came to the dinner, wrote a check for such an amount? What is going on? So he drops the rabbi off in front of one of the shacks and he says, Rabbi, that's, that's where you need to go, that house. So he gets out and he says, please wait over here. <laughs> uh, the last thing he wants is to be ended, uh, end up in one of these places. And, 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 I, I, I need to go back to the city, please wait over here. I'm just going to go see what's going on. He goes and he knocks on the door. An elderly looking tzaddik opens the door and he says, Ah, Rabbi, I was waiting for you. You're waiting for me? <laughs> okay, please explain. So this elderly looking tzaddik explains to Rav Kahaneman, the Panovich Rav, and he says that when he was a little boy, speaking about himself, he was one of eight orphans being supported by a single mother. And she didn't have much means to support her children. But one of the ways that she was able to provide them and her son with a tutor, a rabbi that's going to teach him Torah, is by milking the only cow they had, taking that milk, selling it, and then going to pay the tutor with that money. One month, there was no milk in this cow. The tutor wanted to get paid. And she said, I'm so sorry, I don't have any money to give you. Cow is dry. 
but please give me another month. Hopefully, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to get milk this month, and uh, we'll be able to pay you, up, pay you back. Okay? Two months in a row go by, the cow's udders dry, nothing doing. She doesn't get milk. She's not able to sell the milk of the cow. The tutor comes back and he says, Ma'am, do you have the money? And she says, I'm so sorry, I don't have money. But keep teaching my son, please. Please! Keep teaching my son Torah! I need to support my family. If you don't have, I might have to find another student. And she says, don't. Please keep teaching my son, I'm gonna pay you. You know what? And she says, here's the cow. The cow is yours. Bechavod. Forget the milk. The cow is yours. The cow? You're giving the, the rabbi the cow? That, that's your livelihood. That, that's what you're living from. That, that, that's like giving someone the keys to your car. That's, here's the keys to the business. What are you, you going to have now? And she says, just keep teaching my son to rabbi, forget the money. Here's the cow. And the elderly rabbi said, when I saw my mother's mesirut nefesh for the Torah, when I saw, saw her ahava Torah, and what she did for the Torah, that set the stage, that raised the bar, and that showed me in my life what Torah is. When I heard, Rabbi, that you're coming to town, and you're having a dinner in South Africa, to go build Torah, I sold my house to come live over here, and I put all of that money in the check, so that you could go and build Torah, Rabbi. I apologize. That is the last check you're going to be getting from me. I don't have any more money to give you, Rabbi. Somebody sold his house to go live in a shed so the Rabbi could build Torah. You know what we could say on this person? We say it every day. To love Borei Olam with all of our heart, with our entire life, Bechol Me'odecha, with all of our money. The tzaddik just took his money, literally his house, he sold it just to live in a shack so he could provide the rabbi with the means to build Torah. And that is mercy, root nefesh for Torah. That is loving Hashem, that is loving the Torah of Hashem. With all of our money, peshuto ke mashma'o. That is Am Yisrael, ashreha am shekacha lo. Fortunate is such a nation that understands what Torah is. And someone that doesn't understand what Torah is, they could scratch their head and they'll say, What? What? You sold your house? I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm not telling anybody to go sell your house and go buy an apartment in Bronx. <laughs> Even though there happens to be a very nice uh, Jewish community in Riverdale. But don't get any idea. I'm not telling you what to do. That's clearly not the message. But look on his level of the Ahava Torah that he had. The Mesirut Nefesh for the Torah. That is a way to make a build Torah. And that is someone that understands what Torah is. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.